Thank you for joining us, folks. Today, I'm doing something very unique and out of the ordinary. I have been talking about immigration in the last few episodes, and so I decided what better thing to do than to get the perspective of somebody who is an immigrant themselves. And somebody that's not my wife, who's been here for over 20 years and is now a naturalized citizen. So we are actually talking about somebody who is still in the process. So today I have Christian here. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Um, we're going to talk about all kinds of things. And we're just going to get a perspective that you may not hear from, you know, other podcasts or from, you know, the news. So let's start. Where are you from? I'm from Venezuela. All right. And how long have you been in the United States from Venezuela? Since 2017. So it's almost seven years. Okay, almost seven years. And you're still working through the immigration process. Correct, yes. And you are here legally. Correct. All right. So just up front, if anybody's watching, it's all legal here. So we're good. All right. So tell me about what motivated you to come to the United States. Um, what mot motivates me was the opportunities mm -hmm. I've seen in the United States. Um, the free speech that not all the countries have. Right. is something really beautiful to to have and um, mostly the opportunity to grow okay that's that's, that's the best part uh, we can find in the u.s so tell me some differences about free speech and about the opportunities the two things that you just mentioned tell me some of the differences between your experience in venezuela and your experience here in the united states um basically in here you can see um people argumenting, like having uh, debates, mm -hmm. talking about differences, and that's, uh, that's allowed even in the media. You can see it in the media. People who don't like a political party and express their ideas and everything, uh, you cannot see that in, in my country. You cannot see it. Uh, people are persecuted if you have a different opinion from the uh, government. And what you can see on the media is only good things about the government. Mm -hmm. So you can see nobody um, expressing their right ideas. Okay. So yeah. if, I was, if I was living in Venezuela yeah. and I had a podcast like I do now, yeah. and I was criticizing the government like I do now, yeah. I would be in trouble. Most likely, yes. Okay. All right. So that's a big difference. What about opportunities? What are some of the differences in opportunities? Um... For example, the the minimum wage salary uh, is enough to live uh, in in here. Even like you can live out of a minimum salary. You can have the basics uh, house. You can have the basic food and uh, all the services. You you can have a car. You can have an insurance. In Venezuela, with the minimum salary, is not enough to live. So what do people do? People do not eat uh, like eat correctly. The people don't have the three meals per day usually mm -hmm. and the majority of the people don't have the three meals and they don't have a good plate balance, nutritional plate mm -hmm. with protein, with everything. They just eat what they have, what what they can get for the salary they have. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, like business or self-improvement so like here you can go to school you can go to the library you can yeah. read books you can go on youtube there, there are a lot of ways to learn yes like a new skill yeah so that somebody will pay you for that new skill correct um are those kind of opportunities available in venezuela um for what i hear still there are like opportunities like you can still have a business you can still have a couple of things but it, the the growth is not a uh, like in here, uh, you can you have more opportunities in here to to grow your to straight your mind mm -hmm. to straight your skills to enhance and to improve. Um, you have a lot of um, educational um, opportunities mm -hmm. uh, over there. The it's it's not that easy to find. Okay, yeah. so so they're there, but just not as abundant. Yes. Okay. Not as abundant. Correct. Okay, gotcha. And so when you came here, uh, how, 
What was the process for you to get here? Did you just get on a plane, fly over here, fill out some forms? Did you sneak yes, under some barbed I, wire? I, I, I used to have a visa. Okay. So I traveled to the U.S. Okay. With, with visa. I traveled a couple times to, um, uh, to competition in here <laughs> in the U.S. So I traveled a couple times. So I have my visa. So I were able to travel to the U.S. by plane. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, and, and you said you, you came here actually a couple times before that. Yes, correct. So you already had an idea of what America was like. Correct. Before you decided, you know what, I'm going to go there and try to make a, a life there. Correct. Gotcha, okay. And so when you got here, well, let me, let me let's back up. Did you speak English before you got here? Um, I speak the basic. Okay, what does that mean? And I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I understand the majority. Uh, I could read, okay, um, but my speaking uh, skill is not one hundred percent. Okay, I'm still learning that. But in my in that time, my speaking skills were like ten percent. I were only able to communicate. With, I I made more mistakes than I'm making now. Okay, um, but even with that amount, uh, I was able to make a living. Myself. Gotcha. Yeah. How difficult was it for you? Like, well, let's, when you came over here, Correct. did you know anybody when you decided to finally come over here? Did you have some friends or family? I have a family member okay. in here. And also when I um, came the first time, I came to Michigan, which is totally different from Florida. Right. And in there, I saw only <laughs> the majority of people were American. Right. In here, you still are able to find like uh, a lot of Hispanic, uh, okay. big Hispanic um, uh, population, I can mm -hmm. say. So in here, uh, it's easier to find people that speak in Spanish. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And then they helped you uh, through the process of learning to speak English correct. much better. Yes. Okay. Correct. I'm not sure if that was grammatically correct on my part, saying much better, but uh, you know, a lot of Americans aren't so good at it either. So. Stay humble, America. Uh, okay, so you get here, and um, so how did you find your way to working? Um, the first job I had was uh, on a restaurant, mm -hmm. and I started develop over there, like from the scratch. I study on my country me uh, mechanical engineering. Okay. I didn't finish it, but I I just wanted to work. So whatever work I could find, I took it. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, and then now you're working in the restaurant industry. Yes. Um, and you enjoy that? Yeah, I love it. Okay. Yeah, so, so much more than mechanical engineering? No. I still okay. Not that far. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. But, uh, but uh, I hope one day I can, I can grow and I can create something for myself in that. In gotcha. That, yes. Okay. And so now we're having this huge raging debate okay. about immigration here in the country. Yes. I um, and a lot of it centers around this idea of illegal immigrants. And just so that we're clear, when we say illegal immigrants here, what we mean is somebody who did not get permission to come into the country. Correct. Or somebody who did get permission, but has overstayed longer than they were supposed to. Okay. Maybe their paperwork ran out, um, and, and, and so that maybe they were supposed to leave and then come back, but they didn't, they just stayed here. So as somebody who is a legal immigrant, okay. what is your impression of the conversation in America? Do you find it annoying? Do you find it scary? Do you find it misguided? Do you not care? Like, what is your impression just like, just in general, just hearing Trump versus Kamala, all that stuff? I feel um, everyone have their point, mm -hmm. their point of view, and I respect all point of view. Um, I understand some parts they wanted to, they feel like uh, being on board of that subject and uh, like um, deportation, for example, mm -hmm. uh, they feel like they are, um, they are, uh, I don't know how to say, it, like defending their, their country. Okay. And I understand to totally that part. I know there are bad people in, from all nationalities uh, doing bad things or not, not doing the things correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, uh, they are like not taking the advantage of living good in this country and doing the things uh, correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand both of, the, of both of the sides right. of, the, of the conversation. 
Gotcha. Is it a one that you lean toward more? No, honestly, you know, I don't, I don't lean to any of those sides. I, okay. I understand both sides. Gotcha. Yeah. So when it comes to um, illegal immigrants, like right now, Donald Trump, the new president, yeah. has promised that he's going to deport somewhere between 11 and 16 million illegal immigrants. Uh, does that concern you or bother you? I feel, I feel um, there are a lot of people, good people, who are working um, in this country. Uh, they are doing their best uh, mm -hmm. to support their families and that probably they don't have the opportunities of being here rightfully. Okay. And it's a shame if those people get to get deported because they are trying, I know there are people that are trying to do their best. Right. And and to to do the things correctly, even though they are illegally, they mm -hmm. are trying to do their best uh, correctly. But right. I, I told you before the show, that one of my personal experiences when I was younger was working for a rent -a center And for anybody that's not familiar with Rent-A-Center, it's just basically a place that you can go and rent things for your house. Washer, dryer, a bed, a table, those kind of things, lamps and all that good stuff. And some of our best customers in Indiana were Mexicans. And at the time, I don't think there was much of a Venezuelan presence uh, because as we said, or as we discussed earlier, that that was prior to the big wave of Venezuelans coming to this particular country or to our country. So my experience was, was more with Mexicans. But one of the reasons that made them such good customers is that they always paid on time and they never gave us any trouble. Whereas some of my fellow Americans would give us trouble. They would sometimes not pay on time. They would not pay on time and then not give us our stuff back like they were supposed to. But we didn't have these problems with Mexicans. And some of them we, we didn't know for sure, but we assumed that some of them may be illegal or maybe they knew some illegal Mexicans. Maybe some of them, maybe there was a mixture of them, right? right? Maybe there were some that were legal, some that were not legal. Is that your impression of most? Would you say, like, is that your impression of illegal immigrants here in this country? Um, and I know you don't know all of them, of course, right? Yeah. So just your impression, just from what you've heard and. There are a lot of people over there that they are trying to do everything, uh, let's say, by the book. Mm -hmm. They're trying to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. They're trying to work hard. And they're trying to stay away of the streets, let's say, mm -hmm. as possible, to not get like uh, into any trouble. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to uh, walk straight. Right. So that's my impression, yes. Okay. There so their only are, crime, for the most part, is going to be coming here without permission. Correct. Okay. And then otherwise, they're actually doing exactly what Americans want them to do. They're coming here, they're paying their bills, they're going to work, they're being good citizens, not citizens, but they're being good members of society. Yes. And they're not breaking the law, uh, they're not committing crimes, you know, those kind of things. So for those who are, because they're, like, as we established, there are bad people in every country, and bad people migrate from one country to another. Correct. So Americans are bad Americans, there's bad Venezuelans, there's bad Mexicans, so on and so forth, right? Um, my wife is from Indonesia, there's bad Indonesians over there. Um, if you had to guess, of the people that are not legal, yeah. how many do you suppose are doing things that would make Americans actually upset? Maybe they're illegally selling drugs, they're harming other people, they're robbing, stealing, those kind of things. I would like to say like uh, a really small, tiny percentage mm -hmm. that they are um, doing those things. Mm -hmm. And the bad part of the media is you're always going to see the bad things more, uh, it's going to cause more impression in yourself. Right. So if you see um, for every hundred people that are doing great, uh, there's going to be one people who's going to mess it up. Right. So I know there are a lot of people working hard, uh, being great in their in their um, areas. Uh, mm -hmm. From from my country, for example, being doing great things for for this country. They are working really hard, and and I and I know you cannot see that those people in the media, but you will see someone that is hurting people. Right. In I don't know in. Colorado, for right. example. Right, right. So, so the, I'm not going to get the name right, but the, uh, the Atregas gang or whatever that's called, 
the, uh, yes, I, 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 know, I, I know there's a name. Is it and I, tren, tren yeah, 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 I totally got that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so, for instance, yeah. uh, th so those are some bad people. And somebody else told me that what basically happened is that Venezuela, their economy didn't do so well. Correct. And so a lot of people, we had a big, huge wave of people that were coming here because they're like, hey, our country is falling apart. Let's go somewhere where we can live yeah. and we can, you know, have a job and we can feed our families and we can maybe watch some TV and Correct. read some books at night, whatever. Right. Um, and then when you had this mass migration of good people that left, well, then the gang members, the bad people, they didn't have too many people to harass yeah, and that's one victimize. of the theories, yes. And so they followed, and so now they're living in places like Colorado and other places, and they're causing problems. Correct. So what's your, like, when you think about those kind of people, yeah. what's your thought? My thought is, um, in that point, uh, I understand more when there are people like uh, Trump, they wanted to deport mm -hmm. uh, the bad people from the U.S., right. which is totally understandable. There are right. there are a small percentage of uh, immigrants doing illegal things, mm -hmm. uh, making trouble, mm -hmm. and I understand his point of view to take it out from here. Right. To and and that's totally understandable. So you support it? I support to those bad people doing okay. bad things. Of course, leave this country. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I, it was same as well. Um, so. Like, I, I guess my... You my, have to protect your house. That's what I, I, right. I understand. Right. And is that the sentiment, like, is that sentiment generally what I would find if I were to talk to other immigrants from Venezuela or any country? Is that, like, when you talk to other people that you know have immigrated here, yeah. do they have the same feeling? I feel that's the, that's the reasonable things to think, okay. to say. That's the most reasonable. Okay. Of course, if there are bad people doing bad things, is the best way is to just take it out from here. But but that's that's your opinion. But what about like others that you know? Like, I think yes. Okay. It's the same. So, so, so you're not alone in, in this no, idea. No, I'm not alone. Okay. I gotcha. think it's the same. Yes. Gotcha. Um, is there a concern on your part that um, that if Trump goes through with this plan to deport? 16 to 20 million Americans that it will capture you as well? Um, it's always a concern, Okay. a small concern. Um, I would like to think that I'm working hard and doing the things right, paying my taxes, doing everything correctly. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm growing and I'm giving my, my part, doing my part for this country. Okay. And so, and I would like to think that that's have to be uh, some things that have weight mm -hmm. in order to me to stay, to be able to stay. Right. Because my big concern, and there are stories to, to back this up, and there's stories and data, not just stories, yeah. but, but there's actual data where people researched and said, yes, there are people uh, that this has happened to, a lot of them, yeah. right? And one of those things is that people who are here legally get deported through a mistake okay right like maybe the government for whatever reason they say hey you're a citizen or you're a legal resident and you should be able to stay here but for whatever reason we've determined that maybe maybe we think you're an illegal immigrant do you okay. do, do you have any concerns that that the government might make a mistake and say I honestly didn't think about that okay so so it's not really something that you're thinking no. about Okay, so you're just more worried that they may just choose to say, no, you can no longer be here. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Um, because that's a big concern of mine is uh, I read a lot of stories that even citizens have been deported. Yeah. Like literally physically deported out of the country and had to fight to get back in and they were citizens. So way I look at it is if that happens right now with no big, huge program to deal with, millions of people what's going to happen when we implement a big huge program for millions of people how many how many times will they get it wrong yeah and then you know what are the consequences of that and that's what that's what bothers me so you're here you're doing all all the things right and you oppose like bad people that are coming over here and causing problems um what other kind of 
concerns. In fact, I tell you what, let's dive into this. Um, how do you feel as an immigrant okay. when you're watching the news and you're hearing Americans argue? Do you ever feel like, man, some of these people don't want me? Or do you ever feel like Americans have a bad attitude toward immigrants? Or like, like, like what's your just general, or, or do you like, no, I think most Americans like me, but maybe they're scared. Like, what, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I feel like uh, being treated really good in here. Okay. Uh, I never suffer, probably, I hear there are people that suffer like mm -hmm. discrimination issues. Uh, personally, I never had that issue. Okay. Or probably I didn't notice. Okay. Probably someone uh, didn't like me, but I didn't just, uh, didn't pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. That could be one of the things. But the other part uh, is like, um, I never suffered that discrimination part, luckily, mm -hmm. in here. I never. I And the first question you made was what I think about people talking about it. Right, right. Because there's, I guess there's two elements to that. Yeah. There's the conversations that you might hear, right? The conversations on the news yeah. or some, maybe you read something on social media. But then there's also how people treat you specifically. Yeah. So. If, well, I, if I hear someone from... From the political side, if I hear a, a candidate, for example, if I hear a candidate speaking about uh, immigration issues, the first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, they are, tr they are saying this because there are people who really like this and uh, they're trying to get their votes. So I don't take it personally. Okay. I take it like it, they are supposed to say those type of things in order to get the votes. Okay, so let's, let's go further with that. Okay. In your opinion, just yeah. based on what you've heard and your experience, and you've been here seven years, so that's yeah. a fair amount of time. Yeah. Based on the way that Americans talk about immigration, poli uh, polit uh, politicians talk about immigration, the way that they try to get votes, would you say that America is racist based on that? Um, no. Okay. There, there are some of the people. Okay. That but I overall... Feel Huh? Overall. overall? Overall, no, I, I don't think so. Okay. I think there is plenty. Um, what I know is America is built on immigrants. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's a fact. And and I don't think uh, when we hear those things about uh, immigration is is about racism. Okay. It's, it's just about um, they're trying to protect and being uh, protective okay. of their country. Okay. So and, that's the way I see it. Okay. And that's the way I like to think it is. Okay. Yeah. So, so you don't, because a lot of people will say, hey, if you don't want immigrants, you're just a racist person. And I, I disagree. I think that there's room for people to maybe uh, be wrong, yeah. <laughs> right? Like you can always be wrong about something. Yeah. Um, you, can always, um, you, you can always have the right, uh, your, your heart being in the right place. Yes but at the same time, maybe going about it incorrectly. So maybe people want to be protective of their country and they want to make sure that we remain a good, awesome country with lots of opportunity. Correct. And it's possible that somebody might have ideas that maybe aren't so good. Yeah. So they're well-intentioned, they just got bad ideas. But you don't, but okay, so you don't think that most people are racist but just based on their immigration conversations. Correct. Um, and then personally, you can't think of any major uh, incidents where somebody has been, you know, like, oh, because in talking to you, yeah. it's very clear that you are from another country. Yeah. Um, your, your, your grammar isn't at its yeah. best, right? Um, you have an accent. So it's, it's, uh, it's obvious to me that you're it's from obvious, another country. Yes. Um, and so because of that, it might be that somebody might say, hey, go back to your country or you know, because well, I never hear that. Okay, Be and, and and the reason I say that is because, um, as a matter if, of fact, at least in Florida, um, I feel people are trying. Sometimes it depends my my language barrier depends mm -hmm. on the day. I think uh, sometimes it's getting really hard to communicate myself. But I feel, at least in Florida, there are a lot of people, American people, who always try to understand me and try to. Uh, uh, Complement what I'm trying to say. Gotcha. And they're trying to understand, which is pretty cool. So, okay. in, if uh, taking that into account, I don't think like I never ha suffer from that. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Because you know, like a lot, that, that's if I didn't know you. Yeah. 
I would immediately know, hey, he's from another country somewhere. Yeah. I, w I might not know which one, but I would know because Americans can tell who's been born and raised here. If I went to Venezuela, even if I learned Spanish, they're going to know, unless I've been there a very long time yeah. and have adapted you know, and, and really learned the language very, very well, they're going to know he's not from here. Yeah. <laughs> right? But if, I've, if I was born and raised there, people would also know. Yeah. Right. Because they would be able to tell by little nuances in the things that I say, maybe the way that I carry myself, gestures, stuff like that. Things that uh, that you only know if you've been there forever. Yes. Um, and so your experience here has been pretty pleasant. Like yeah. people, even though they know you're an immigrant, they're not giving you a hard time. Correct. OK, yes. that's good, uh, because that is how I think of America. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of people that will make arguments and say, well, you know, um, people are mean, they say mean things. And I'm like, well, people say mean things to anybody, not just Correct. immigrants. Yes. Um, so I don't doubt that it happens, yeah. but I like to think that most of the time, Americans are pretty, they treat immigrants about the same as they treat everybody else. Yes, for I the would most like part. to think that too. So, that, and that's been for my observation. Part, yes. Yeah, I mean, there's some jerks out there. And, you know, there's always jerks, yeah. you know. Um, so that's, All that's nationalities. right, right. Like I've been to a yeah. plenty of countries and, you know, there are jerks there in, in those countries, um, you know, and, but, but like when I went to, when I went to Mexico years ago when I was a little kid, well, not a kid, but like, well, yes, a kid, but not little. When I was like 17, I, uh, I went to Mexico and I always knew when they were talking about me cause they would say, um, uh, what's the word they use? Uh, Drawing a blank on it. What's the word they call for white people? Uh, Guero? Uh, no, there's another one. Um, I th um, oh, I'm drawing a blank on the word now. Uh, they, that, it's like guerito. Uh, yeah, I know there's a different like word. Um, I'm, 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 right now, I'm, the, the word that I have in my mind is the Indonesian word, which is boule. So if you're in Indonesia and you're an American and you hear boule, they are talking about you. And that is basically the equivalent of um, saying, um, a gringo. Oh, okay. So when I was in Mexico, if I heard gringo, I knew they were talking about yes. me. Because, like, I'm the only one there. Yeah. <laughs> like, everybody else is Mexican. And they can tell. Like, sometimes they could tell before I even said anything. Yeah. Like, they could just tell by looking at me. You know, maybe the clothes that I'm wearing or, the you know, whatever. Whatever other details that stand out that I don't realize. So it was interesting. But I never, I never met anybody that was mean to me. Okay. There or in Indonesia, not to say that there aren't people. So I think you know I think my limited experience in other countries has been similar, although it's not been seven years. Okay. So okay, so we're we're looking at doing this this uh, deportation. What do you think is gonna? In my opinion, if we deport eleven to sixteen million people, our economy is gonna take a huge hit. Because in my opinion, most of the people that are here, whether they're legal or illegal, are doing some level of work. Yes. Do you feel like that's the same as, do you understand yes, it to be true? absolutely. They are, they okay. are filling a, a spot in, in, in a position, in somewhere. So uh, that position is going to be empty. Right. Because you have to be covered. And, and somebody was relying on that work Correct. to be yes. done, yes. whatever that work is. I mean, yes. if, it's, if it's agriculture and it's like, you know, picking crops, somebody was relying on those crops to be pulled. Correct. And so now if you take away people, somebody else has to do it. Who? Who's going to do that? Correct. And if you do a, a large... That's not a secret. Right. And if you do a large number of people, yeah. well, now you're going to have a lot of positions that are all of a sudden empty. Correct. And so now what you'll have is, let's just take restaurant and agriculture, right? Well, now any Americans or anybody that's left that's unemployed they are going to have a lot of jobs to choose from, whereas the jobs are going to have very few people that are available to, to take over those jobs. Correct. So I think that's going to be a bit of a problem. So I, I actually think it's a bad idea. But do you think it's in any way a good idea? Um, I would like to think and, and have hope mm -hmm. that it's not going to be that massive. Okay. I would like to have the hope that it's going to be only with, with the bad people who okay. are doing uh, bad stuff in here. I would like to think it's only going to apply in my mind. Right. That is going to only apply to them. I don't know if I'm being like uh, having my hopes high. Right. But that's what I would like to think. Right. 
And that's the way I, I would like to think is going to happen. I mean, uh, so if you look at Trump's first presidency, yeah. he promised a lot yeah. and delivered not so much. On the immigration part? Yeah. Um, he delivered some, but not nearly as much as he promised. Okay. So he promised a big, huge wall across the border, okay. which I thought was a bad idea, but he promised it, and we didn't get it, okay. right? Um, he also promised to deport people at that time. I think the number, if you go back and you look, he was promising to deport like 3 million people, and he never did. So I feel like chances are his promise is now, I'm going to deport you know, 16 million people, probably not going to happen because he didn't do it for 3 million. So why would I believe that he's going to do it in 16 million? I think the light has went down in here, but that's okay. I think we're good. So, and, you know, we're about a half an hour in. And, um, I don't know. I, I think the conversation's going well. I don't know that we're going to have too much longer. So it is getting darker quicker. Okay. <laughs> so we'll be good. We don't have to turn any lights on. All right. Um, so what else can you tell me about your experience as an immigrant or something that Americans probably should know, but you think maybe they don't know? Uh, about anything about. anything like is there just is there is there like is are there conversations that you might yeah. have with other immigrants yeah. and you ever wonder and say i wish americans knew this yeah um, and maybe they maybe you feel like they don't sometimes um i i feel um all americans have great opportunities from the start um uh, i know i know and i feel and, and this is my personal opinion I've been hearing a lot that the education system system is is not as great, and that's something I haven't researched if it's true or not. But leaving aside the education system, I feel there is plenty of opportunities to grow in this country, mm -hmm. and and the opportunities is for everyone. So, and I feel in here, everyone have the same opportunities. Even that it sounds like a cliche, um, if you are poor or uh, media uh, in the media or average uh, in economy mm -hmm. wise speaking right uh, middle class middle class correct uh, I feel every everyone have opportunities to grow it doesn't matter where is your uh, class mm -hmm. uh, I feel you everyone have the same opportunities and sometimes I feel Americans don't see it that way okay and that's my personal opinion right that's, so we, we take it for granted yeah, you take it for granted. Right, because maybe we grew up here and we've lived so long with all these opportunities that it's easy to ignore them, whereas somebody like you have come over here and a lot of these opportunities are new. Yeah. There are things that you didn't have available in Venezuela yeah. um, and many other countries the same. They don't have these same opportunities. Um, and so people like you come over and you're like, man, I'm going to jump on that. I'm excited. Yeah. And then Americans are like, yeah, that's not good enough, <laughs> right? Probably, Cause, cause yes. I, I mean, And I'm kind of adding to what you're yeah. saying because I believe that's the case. I believe that a lot of Americans are spoiled. And, and the other part, and the other part is um, I think, um, at least what I've seen in, in the media, I think people are, if they are red, they are red 100%. If mm -hmm. they are blue, they are blue 100%. There is no like intermediate. Okay. There is no like... Uh, acknowledge the other good parts of the other ones. Right. Um, and that sometimes, like, I'm trying, to, like, I feel um, you are able to to acknowledge the good parts of the other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I feel you are you are able to say, okay, that's a good idea for the for if you are if you are red, you you can consider something good for the other part. Mm -hmm. And that's something I I I miss that. That I feel like we can, uh, like in here, it can improve a little bit. Right. Every 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 place can improve. Right, a right, bit. right. But uh, that's I'll, something personal. Yeah, I'm gonna turn on the light a little bit just to make sure okay. that we're still getting a, a good. There, that should be good. That should be good. All right, so we've got some light on here just in case it's getting too dark in here. Yeah. Um, okay, so you know, when it comes to politics. Yeah. I know you don't necessarily pay closely attention. No, I don't. Because you can't vote. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. But if, but just from what little that you've paid attention to, what was your impression of Kamala Harris? What was your impression of Donald Trump? Um, um, I didn't pay too much attention, mm -hmm. but my impression on both of them was uh, was really like extreme of, of each of them. And sometimes I understand that's how politics are. Uh, 
they are just looking for boats. They probably uh, they are probably like that. Mm -hmm. They are not probably extremely like that extremes. Uh, but that's what I see in the media. Like okay. I've seen some extremes. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you could have voted, yeah, who would you vote for? Um, sometimes I I saw like Kamala Harris uh, point of view, and there are there are things that I particularly not support. Okay. And there are things that it reminds me of some uh, left wing uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. And when you come from a country that uh, was um, demolished for saying like that, for uh, extreme left ideas, uh, you don't like that. So you, you are trying to avoid that. Okay. So in that order of idea, I have, I have to vote. It's not because I like Trump, it's because I don't like her ideas. Okay, so just so that I understand and make sure anybody listening clearly understands, you are saying, hey, when I was in Venezuela, there were a lot of left-leaning ideas Correct. that turned out very badly. Yeah. And so when we get over here and I hear Kamala Harris talking and some of her ideas either are left-leaning or sound very close to some of the ideas that failed in my country, I'm not interested in that. Correct. So if I were to vote, you wouldn't be voting for Trump. You would be voting against Kamala Harris because of Correct. the ideas that she was supporting. Correct. Even though his immigration ideas could potentially harm you. Correct. So you would support him even despite that. Yes. Because if, if, it's if, better I'm, I'm, to... I'm thinking, I'm thinking like, okay, let's, let's get to a point I'm able to vote. Right. I'm going to try to vote and I'm, first I'm going to research better than what I'm doing right now. Sure, I'm just sure. I'm just talking yeah, yeah, for yeah. what I saw on the media. Right. At first I'm going to research better because I I feel the vote is a great responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel is is something you don't have to take it lightly. Mm -hmm. It's something really important and and even like in here when I hear Americans saying like I'm not going to vote, I always try to say like you have to vote. Like you right. have to you have to do this because it's important. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who you're going to vote. I feel you have to do it. Right. Um, because you want to, you, you are going to uh, look to the future and, and wanted to say like, okay, uh, I was part of this mm -hmm. change. I, I, if, if the change was good or, um, so with that being said, I, I lost my track, my idea. The first it's okay. One. It's okay. So, uh, you know, basically you're saying, hey, all right, um, voting to you is an important deal. Yes. And it's something that you, you feel like Americans should yes. engage in so, more. Oh, I understand. So uh, in that order of idea, I will do in my proper research and I will vote for whatever is going to be better for the country, or at least for my, in my opinion. Sure, sure. Point. Gotcha. Yeah. But off just just looking out at the landscape, just kind of briefly looking, yeah. you're because you're not the first person that I've heard say something like that. Yeah. Um, back in I'm trying to think of what year it was, whenever a hurricane um, is it Katrina? No, not Katrina. Hurricane. Uh, which one was it? Maybe one of the hurricanes that came through here. I'm trying to remember which one it was. Um, I'm just drawing a blank at the moment. But there was a major hurricane that we had uh, a few years back, and people from uh, this from South Florida were fleeing up here. Yep. And so we ended up hosting a Cuban family. And what I mean by that is actually three Cuban families. So it was funny, we were doing Airbnb at the time and uh, a request came in and we misread it, I misread it. And I thought it said three people in our family, do you have a place to stay? What they were really trying to say was we have three families. <laughs> so, and there's a picture of like, in the other room of all of us, there's like 13 of them. Okay. And they stayed here. Now we have a pretty big house, so we're, we're, we were actually able to host them uh, safely. But there were like 13 people in this house. And it was just me and my wife at the time. My, my mother-in-law wasn't here and our son wasn't born yet. And so um, they were all from Cuba, or Cubans. Some of the older ones were actually from Cuba. Some of the younger ones were born and raised here. And so we were talking to them and we just ended up talking about politics in general. And they told me that in, it, it, it was for people that left Cuba because of the political circumstances, they look and they say communism is terrible and 
they were they are, they're they're so bad uh, they're so um, bothered by it that they won't even send money back to Cuba to family members because they know that the money will ultimately go to the government and they don't want to support the government whatsoever right so they were like really big they were like you know Democrats tend to have ideas that are more aligned with what we left yeah. we don't want to have anything to do with that uh, now the younger generations I think they're a little different because they didn't experience the uh, you know the the left ideas in their country that ruined it yeah. so they have different views of things and so they may be more willing to vote for Democrats so it's very interesting um, that and they said that was a large number of the community uh, in Cuba uh, of the Cuban community it for Venezuelans is that do a lot of Venezuelans feel that same way yes totally they do yeah so they would have likely just again on the surface probably voted for Trump Probably, yes. Okay. So, so even his rhetoric doesn't really, it doesn't make people hate him. The what? It doesn't make Venezuelans or immigrants that you know hate him. And no, I don't think so. I think, um, I think um, that's, again, that's the, the choice. There, there wasn't too many choices. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the other choice is the, the libertarian, for example. Mm -hmm. So... That's the two choice you always hear most, and and when you hear someone uh, uh, talking about as again like I, I said like on the on the left side of the ideas, you go to the opposite. Like okay. if you suffer some PTSD or, or something about it, so right. I don't like this. I'm going to go right. to, with this with this side because I don't like what you're saying. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's pretty common uh, feeling in the in the yes. community as well. Okay. Yes, it is gotcha. pretty common uh, because a lot of people are you know. I don't know if you heard this, but a lot of Trump supporters are accused of being anti-immigrant, like all together, not illegal immigrants, not violent criminals, all of them. Okay. Um, they're accused of being racist. They're accused of being bigots. Uh, do you know very many Trump supporters, American Trump supporters? I do know some. How, how do you, uh, how do they treat you? Really good. Do they? Yeah. So they don't seem to be bothered that you, and they know no. you're an immigrant? Trump, Trump supporters are Republicans. Right. Yeah. But they don't. They don't mind that you're an immigrant. In your no, home? they don't. They don't. At least, at least not to my face. I, okay. I, that's what I've seen. I've seen okay. like good treat. They treat me good. Okay. And and I don't. I never feel like any any raises whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Um, all right. What, what well, else? On the same part. On the same part. On the Democrat side, I never uh, receive any any racism whatsoever. Okay. So. In any of the parts. Okay, so you don't really think that it comes from either one of them. Yeah, correct. Just like you yeah. said earlier, it's just people that are making their arguments to try to figure out how we can make America the best or keep correct. it being yes. the best. And so everybody wants to protect their country. They all have a different way of thinking about how, to, how it's best done. And so for you and maybe some other immigrants, you don't really get too worked up over it. You're just like, all right, you guys figure it out and then we'll, we'll go from there. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Um, what else? What else is there to know? What is what? What else is there to know? Mm, I don't have anything on top of my mind right now. Okay. Um, I I do feel this is a, a great country, so and worth to live with. When's your next uh, year? Not month or specific, but just year. When do you see? When 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 does the government having you come in to try to finish the immigration process? I will hope next year. Next year. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it possible it could be longer? Yeah, it's possible. Okay. Uh, how long do you suppose it could be? Um, it's not a time. Okay. Uh, but I I believe between one to three years more. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, did you find the immigration process to be easy or difficult? Um, it's it's not hard. Okay. But you have to have a lot of patience because it takes time. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you know much about the process before you came here? No. So you came here and then you had to figure out the process. Correct. Yes. Gotcha. Um, is that the case for most immigrants? That's the case for most immigrants. Okay. Immigrants. So that because uh, you know one of the things that I heard, um, and it's hard to find like a good lawyer to take all the cases and a responsible lawyer. Mm -hmm. It's hard to take. It's hard to find sometimes. Okay. Gotcha. Because uh, one of the things that I heard was that the asylum process yeah. itself, which is one of our bigger issues that we have, yeah. uh, the asylum process. Um, most people get rejected, correct. And some people call it fraud. 
and they say, well, people are coming over here and they're filling out the asylum process, but they're doing it fraudulently, which means they, they know that they're not telling the truth okay. and they're lying about it on purpose to try to get through. And other people have said, well, actually what the real case is, a lot of people don't know what the process is. They don't know what the requirements are necessarily. They're not lawyers. So Correct. they're just coming over here and they hear about the asylum process and that's the one that they... Most of the cases, there is a lawyer involved explaining to you the options. Okay. And it depends on the lawyer how it's going to explain you what are the options are. Right. Sometimes the lawyer can say like, oh, you should go with this and they will fill it out and what they will do it for you without okay. explaining the whole process right. of, the, of the thing. So in reality, yeah. the truth is that immigrants coming over here yeah. are at the mercy of lawyers being a good lawyer and telling them the right information and helping getting them to whichever process Most is best the for them. Cases, yes, it is you know, like and if that. the lawyer's not any good, then they could get somebody in the wrong direction. Or don't fill it out at all. Okay. And and if you are in here, like, uh, you're in here, you don't know much. Right. Probably that lawyer will take your money away too. Gotcha. That's happening. I, I've, okay. I've been hearing about a couple cases like that. Okay. And so in, in the, the truth about immigrants is that they're not coming over here to try to deceive us necessarily. They're coming over here and they just don't know the process. They don't know the laws. They don't know which path they should properly take. Correct. And so they're just taking whatever they can get. Yes. Okay. Uh, because I, I, you know, I think this is the kind of conversation that people need to hear yeah. so that we can find the best way to do it uh, where we get rid of people that we don't want, Correct. criminals, and keep people that we do want. Um, and in my opinion, whether you come over here and you're an engineer um, or whether you're a dishwasher, yep. like those are jobs that need to be done by somebody. Yep. And if you're getting up and you're going to work on time, you're doing your job, you're not causing a problem, you know, and you're not committing crimes, like any serious crimes. I'm not talking about like speeding or something kind of trivial, but like anything serious. Uh, to me, those are the kind of people that we want. That's what made America great. What made America great was people like you coming over here and working hard. Correct. And learning the language, getting better at it, um, not breaking the law, at least not any serious ones. I mean, if you, if you go two miles over the speed limit, yes, technically that's breaking the law, but that's, that's not making America worse, right? Like, that's not what we mean by hurting America. Um, if you're a violent criminal, yes, you're hurting America and you're hurting people, uh, more importantly. So, okay, cool. Well, that, that was great. I think, you know, I think we're about wrapped up here okay. for the conversation. And I appreciate you joining me. Thank you. And well, I'll put this out and people can watch it. And so, you know, like uh, any final words for people? Um, to Americans, uh, I feel like this is a great country. And most of us, we're trying to do our way to live. Mm -hmm. And we're working hard to make this country great too. All right, awesome. Yep. Well, you heard it here, folks. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.